Hello everyone! In this video, I will be guiding you through the creation of your custom signature, seal, date, and combination stamps in Bluebeam Review. These stamps are necessary for sealing, signing, and dating construction plan sets for the Delaware Department of Transportation, as well as any other documents that may need signing. As a note, this video will be kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure. I will go through the initial setup of your Bluebeam interface, which everyone needs to follow. The next few sections will cover signature, seal, date, and combination stamps respectively, so feel free to jump around and follow whichever sections are relevant to the stamps you need. The last section will be about stamp application, which everyone will need to follow. As a note, certain parts of this training requires a licensed copy of Bluebeam. For DelDot internal employees, please email the CAD support email to request a licensed copy. Before we begin, we'll want to set up our Bluebeam application. This is not a required step, but highly recommended as it will allow your application screen to look exactly like mine and will make it easier for you to follow my steps as we move along. So the first thing you do is click on Review and then go to Profiles. As you can see, I have many options here, but I want the Dell Dot option. If you already see this, go ahead and select it, but if you don't see this option, I'm going to go ahead and explain what to do. You're going to go down to the bottom of your screen and select Manage Profiles. Now, you're going to click on the three dots at the bottom here and click on Browse. In the pop-up window, you're going to click on the top address bar and you have to type in backslash backslash dotfs08 backslash cad backslash bluebeam backslash profiles. This will direct you to the correct location to access the Dell Dot profile so that you can set up your screen to match mine. Once you have this typed in, and I'll put it at the bottom, go ahead and click select folder. Now, at the top drop down here, I'm going to go ahead and click on Dell Dot and click OK. So as you can see, my screen changed a little, and that's because, as I said, the Dell Dot profile is going to change where some of your tools are docked so that you can follow right along with me. Now, the next step is to set up our stamp folder. The stamp folder is where we're going to store all of the stamps that we create, so it's very important for you to have your own private stamp folder. Otherwise, other people can access it and steal your personal stamps and signature. The first step is going to be going up to Tools and then clicking on Stamp and click on Change Stamp Folder. So as you can see, it's currently on my Windows C drive and we don't want that. So I'm going to click and type U colon backslash and then hit Enter. Now here we're within my personal drive that only I can access. So I'm going to right click and click on New folder and I'm going to name this folder stamps and go ahead and hit enter. So I'm going to double click into the folder and then click select folder. So now when I go up to stamps change stamp folder I can see my stamp folder is set to u colon backslash stamps and that's my personal stamp folder that no one else can access just how we want it to be. So now that we're all set up properly, I'm going to create our first stamp, which is the signature stamp. The first thing you'll need to do is sign a piece of white paper in pen. Once you're happy with your signature, you'll need to scan it in the highest resolution possible and email it as a PDF to yourself. You're going to want to download this PDF to your computer and maybe name it something so that you know it's your scanned signature. And make sure you know where you're saving that file to, location-wise. So I've already signed, scanned, and emailed a signature to myself, so I'm just going to go ahead up to File and click on Open. I already downloaded my PDF, and as you can see, it's right here, so I'm just going to open that up. And as you can see, it's just a white piece of paper that I've signed and scanned to myself. So next, I'm going to click on Tools, Stamp, Create Stamp. And what I'm going to do is name my stamp with my initials. So I'll use PK underscore signature just so that I know that this is my signature stamp. You're going to want to leave the author and template alone but what I will do is change the width to 2.5 right here and I'm going to leave the height at 1 inch. The blend mode is going to be multiply and then I'm just going to click OK. 
So as you can see, this opened a new tab, and this is where our stamp will be. But for now, we're going to switch back to our other tab, and we're just going to take a screenshot of our signature. Now before I do that, I'm going to have to go up to Review, and click on Preferences. And from here I'm going to go to Tools, Markup, and then at the bottom here, on Snapshot Resolution, I'm going to make sure it's the highest it can be at 600. And this will just make sure that my snapshot will be the highest quality and clearest it can be. So now I'm just going to go ahead and click on OK, and then come up here to Edit, Snapshot. And I'm going to click up in the left top hand corner and drag to select my signature, leaving some white border around my signature to make sure I'm not cutting anything off. So now I'm going to switch back to my other tab, and I'm going to go back up to Edit and click on Paste. So as you can see, my signature snapshot just shows right up, and now I'm going to drag it in to the stamp area and use the yellow handles to adjust the size of my signature to fit. You're going to want to make sure it fits within the bounds and is not getting cut off by any of the sides or corners and just perfectly fits inside. So that's looking pretty good as of now. So I'm just going to go move up to the top corner here and click on file and save. And as you can see, it saved my signature. And now when I go up to tools and stamp, You'll notice that my stamp is not yet showing up. So what I'm going to do is click on Change Stamp Folder, and I'm just going to check that my folder is still set to Personal Drive Stamps, and click on Select Folder. The purpose of doing that is just to reset the stamp folder and remind it to search through the folder for my newly added stamp. So now when I go back, you'll see right there is my signature stamp. Alright, so now we're going to move into our seal stamps. Just like with the signature stamp, you'll need to stamp a piece of white paper clearly with your seal. Then, you're going to scan it in the highest resolution and email it as a PDF to yourself. Then, you're going to download it to your computer and name it accordingly, making sure to remember the location you're saving it to. So here, if I go up to File, and then click on Open, you can see I have my scanned seal file right here. So I'm going to click on it and hit open. So you can see this is not my real seal, but this is just an example that I'm going to use for the purpose of this video. So now I'm just going to go right up here to tools and click on stamp and then click on create stamp. So just like with the signature stamp, I'm going to name it with my initials PK underscore seal. Again, I'm going to leave the author and template untouched, but I'm going to change the width to 1.5 and I'm going to change the height to 1.5 as well. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply and then click OK. So Bluebeam is going to open a new tab for the seal, but we're just going to switch back over to our other tab and take a snapshot. In the signature stamp, I adjusted my preferences for snapshot quality, but this time I don't need to since my preferences will save and carry over from last time. So I'm just going to go up to Edit, Snapshot, and then go ahead and select my entire seal. Perfect. So now I'm going to switch to my other tab and click on Edit, Paste, and now you can see that this is ginormous. So I'm just going to grab this yellow handle here and drag it to adjust the size to fit. So I'm just going to move it around and shift it into position, and that looks pretty great right now. So now I'm going to go up here to File and click on Save. And once again, when we go up to Tools and Stamps, we're not going to see our stamps. We just need to click on Change Stamp Folder and make sure we don't touch anything. Just keep it as our Personal Drive Stamps folder and click on Select Folder. And there you have your seal stamp. The next stamp I'm going to walk you through is the date stamp. And this one's a little tricky because it's different from the other two that we just made. So I'm going to go over here and click on File, and then go ahead and click on New PDF from Template. And I'm going to click on Import Template down here. Now at the top here, I'm going to paste in the template address into the address bar. And the template address you'll want is backslash backslash dot fs08 backslash cad backslash bluebeam backslash dot dot underscore sign underscore seal underscore template dot pdf and I'll put it on the screen for you to copy as well. 
Now you're just going to click enter on your keyboard and as you can see it opens the template on the blue beam screen behind. So I'll just hit the X at the top here. So now that we have our template open, we're not going to touch anything. We're simply going to go up to tools and click on stamp and then click on create stamp. And I'm just going to name it date because it's our date stamp. And again, I'm going to leave the author and template alone and I'm going to set the width to 1.25 inches and I'll set the height to 0.25. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply and then click on OK at the bottom. So once again, Bluebeam has made us a new tab with a little stamp area. And I'm just going to switch back to my other tab and grab this little text box here. Now I'm going to right click and click on copy. And then I'll switch to my other tab over here, right click and click on paste. All right, perfect. So now I'm just going to drag it in here and adjust it to fit using my yellow handles here. Maybe um, just drag it a little bit, maybe zoom in and fit it down a little bit, but that looks great. So now I'm going to go ahead and click on file, save. And now if I go up to my tools, go to stamp and click on change stamp folder. I'm just going to hit select folder to reset the folder. And now when we take a look, there we have our date stamp. All right. The last stamp we're going to go over is the combination stamp. So what we're going to do is switch back to the template tab that we opened in the last section and I'm going to go up to tools, stamp, and we're going to click on our signature. I'm going to go ahead and click to place it and just use the yellow handles to resize it to fit. So perfect. Now I'm going to go up to tools, stamp, and grab my seal and I'm going to try to click as center as possible within the box. And I know that it's smaller than the box, but do not use the handles to resize your seal up or down. We're just going to keep it as is. Now, another thing to note is do not edit the and date. This is very important because it's going to automatically fill in with the current date as needed. So do not manually change that yourself. All right. Now moving on to this red box, I'm going to click on it and hit the delete key on my keyboard. Don't hit the X at the top and we can see it just goes away. So with our combined stamp here, we're going to go ahead and click on file and click on save as. And now this is important. I'm going to go all the way to my personal drive and stamps and I'm going to name it to my initials PK underscore sign underscore seal and then I'll go ahead and click on save at the bottom here and there you have your combination stamp so now we're gonna go over a stamp application and this is a step everyone needs to follow no matter what stamps you made so first I'm gonna go ahead and click on file open and I'm gonna click on my example plans but you'll just select whichever file you plan to stamp so then I'll just go ahead and hit open. Now, as you can see, this is just a very typical title plan. And I'm just going to zoom in here where it needs my signature, date, and seal. So I'm going to go ahead up to tools, stamp. And again, remember, if your recent stamp doesn't show up, click on change stamp folder and select folder to refresh the stamps. And now when I go back, there's my combination stamp at the bottom and that's the one I'm going to use. So I click to place it and now what I'm going to do is click at the top left corner here. I'm going to drag my stamp and you'll see this little blue square here at the top corner of the box and I'll let go to place it. The little blue square is my snaps, so with that on, it's going to perfectly snap into the corner of the box here, and you can see everything lines up perfectly where it should be. Now, also, you can see the date automatically filled itself in with today's date, so that's why you don't have to manually fill it in yourself. And that's how you apply your stamps to a document. Before we save our document, there's one last very important step that cannot be skipped.
we have to flatten the document and this will make it so that nobody can just go ahead and grab your stamp or move it around and steal it for use on another document. So I'm going to go up to document and click on flatten down here at the bottom. We want to have stamp checked and the easiest way to do this is go up here and click on type and then just click it again to deselect everything and then just go ahead and click on stamp. And now this is super important. You're going to go ahead and make sure this allow markup recovery is not checked. Again, this has to be unchecked. And now you can go ahead and just click on flatten over here. Now, as an important note, you do not want to right click on your stamp and click on flatten from here because while it looks great, I mean, it looks like it's flattened right now, but actually other people can come up here up to document and click on unflatten and just move your entire stamp around and steal it. So to repeat, you do not want to use the right click method. You want to go up to document, flatten, make sure stamp is checked, make sure allow markup recovery is not checked and click on flatten. And now you can see when I try to unflatten it, I can't. It's completely unable to be moved around just how we like it. So our last step is to go up to file, click on save, and sleep well knowing that nobody can steal our seal or signature. So that is all for our video today. This video follows the steps outlined in the Bluebeam Signature Seal and Date Stamps wiki page on the Dell.CAD wiki website, and I'll link it here for you if you want to look through that yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're now familiar with how to create your own signature, seal, date, and combination stamps in Bluebeam Review. For internal Dot employees, feel free to contact the CAD support email with any questions. Have a great day and see you next time.